All right. Okay. So thanks for the opportunity to present today. We're really probably the newest member on the block here. Um, our centre, if I can just just started on the 1st of July this year. So it developed from an internal review we had back in 2019, which looked at our capability in particularly big data and health informatics, um, but really identified that UOW had a need to consolidate our research and teaching efforts in data science. And so the data and decision science initiative came from that and it's part of the UOW strategic plan from 2020 to 25. So, of course, right after that review was completed, we've had COVID and um, we all know the, the funding impact that's had on universities. So we've really modified that initial plan um, and we've updated that to reflect our current situation in 2021. And really, I'll talk through what we've been able to do in the, the current environment. So the Data and Decision Science Initiative is being led by NIASRA. And I'll just talk a bit about NIASRA. So NIASRA has got five centres and I'll talk individually about each of these centres, but the names and leaders of those centres are listed here. So probably our most established centre is the Centre for Environmental Informatics, which is led by distinguished professor Noel Cressy and most of you would know him. So it, it specialises in spatial modelling and spatio-temporal spatio environmental data sets. And I'll talk quickly about the staff involved in that. So as I said, many of you will know Noel, but we also have Andrew, who's our ARC DECRA fellow, and Michael, who's our uh, research fellow. And we have a couple of other lecturers that are specifically involved in that centre. Some of you, you would know as well. I think most of you would know Matt in particular. And we also currently have five PhD students in that unit. So some of the current projects that the CEI is involved in, uh, they work a lot with NASA and particularly there they're focusing on uh, modeling CO2 data. So the CO2 data that's retrieved from the NASA's orbiting carbon observatory is very sparse and incomplete. So a lot of the modeling that Noel and his group are doing are looking at uh, filling out that sparse and incomplete data. And excitingly, just recently, they've become involved in two projects, the TIDE project, which is looking at integrating data science and engineering to transform our offshore energy industry, and also the SAFE project. Now, again, a number of people here, I think, are familiar with that project, and some of them are involved in it. But particularly from UOW's point of view, it represents a strong collaboration between our Centre for Sustainable Ecosystems which is led by Sharon Robinson. And she's had a long-standing research track record in Antarctica, looking particularly at ecosystems to do with moss and the effect that climate change is having on those ecosystems. So we also have our Centre for Biometrics and Data Science for Sustainable Primary Industries, which is headed by Senior Professor Brian Cullis, who's shown here with his principal research fellow, Alison Smith. They've also been going for quite a long time as well, and most of their research is funded by the Australian Grain and Research Development Corporation. And traditionally, the focus there has been on experimental design and mixed models, with Brian being one of the initial developers of Osremel. But in the current funding call, they're focusing a lot more on machine learning and um, AI for that research. So they'll be in increasing, they'll be increasing their work in that area. We also have the Centre for Sample Survey Methodology, which is headed by Senior Professor David Steele. And he initially started NIASRA. So his work really focuses on survey design for complex structures. And then we have the Statistical Consulting Centre, which is my day job, so to speak. So that's really focusing on individual consulting on research design and analysis for our research staff and postgraduate students, and also running short courses. And I'd also flag there that my own particular research interest is in predicting weight loss success in lifestyle intervention trials using machine learning. And our newest centre um, is headed by Alberto. So I'm going to let him speak about his centre. Well, uh, thank you. And thanks for uh, having us here. 
Uh, Almerica was saying I'm brand new, even to Australia, just got here in January, and I'm the Center for Health and Social Analytics. He's one of the cogs in the full data science machine that was uh, thought of in that um, report. And so the idea is uh, to align with the wellness strategy that the university has. So to try to get the center to significantly increase the capacity in health uh, and social research, right? At all levels, whether it is, uh, you know, associating with uh, people who hold the data and getting the acquisition, how it's going to be managed and uh, helping a lot of it, uh, which is part of the big work that we have started doing uh, together, is the dissemination and correct interpretation, right, of, uh, of large complex data sets and analysis. Uh, it, there is a big focus right now as being the, let's say the, I wouldn't say the leading horse, but the first one that has kind of some way to go forward in the whole machine of the data science initiative that uh, we're going to be focusing on collaborative research capacity building and right now part of the data science initiative is focusing mainly on the health and social analytics because those are some of the first partners that are coming and since part of my job is to go out and say hey i exist let's get together and do stuff uh you know there's there's someone waving the flag so that's where we're we're moving uh part of it is also across the university creating uh, more literacy on reproducibility, some short courses. Uh, when it comes to other research interests that I have, it's really on linkage error, social networks, and machine learning itself, right? Uh, I think that's pretty much what I have to say. Okay, um, so just to finish up quickly talking about our structure. So this is still a work in progress because as I said, we've only just started. So currently this is the direction we're heading in. So we report to our Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Research through our University Research Committee. And we have a steering committee, which is composed of our executive deans and research directors. And next year, we hope to get an external advisory committee once we get up and running fully. So we have a data and decision science virtual network, which meets quarterly. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the next slide. And we also have working groups. And the first two that we have are in methods and education. So in methods, we're focusing on a project to do with antimicrobial resistance, and also a project looking at some of the local data sets we have in the Illawarra. So our network, which we have just, uh, we had the first meeting actually just before we started up to get everyone interested in May. But our, what we're doing with our virtual network is we're having themed meetings and our first themed meeting will be in September and that's on data visualization and Emmy, if she's still here, Emmy will be presenting at that first, um, first theme meeting that we're having. So our network currently, as Alberto said, it's focusing on health and social analytics. So we have a combination of our research groups in health and our computing and IT groups. We also have a very active Early Start Research Institute that looks at childhood physical activity and nutrition. And we also have a strong focus on ethics in AI at Wollongong as well. So they're involved in our network too. We also have introduced a Bachelor of Data Science and Analytics, and we're looking at introducing some short courses, particularly in data science for health. And we're also looking at whether these short courses can be integrated into graduate certificates or micro credentials. So we have four key areas of focus. So research, and again, um, that comes from the initial report identifying that we want a focal point at UOW for coordinating data science. We also have a very strong focus on education. So that's both in training our existing researchers and postgraduate researchers, but also on looking at our undergraduate subjects as well and reviewing our service subjects to have those focus more on data science and reproducibility as well. And as we get further established, we'll be looking at external and industry engagement. So just to finish up, one of the things we were meant to do was talk about challenges and opportunities. So obviously our biggest challenge is starting in July in the middle of a pandemic where we can only meet virtually. But this also is an opportunity because this disruption and restructuring we're currently um, 
seeing in the academic se sector gives us an opportunity to start new collaborations. And in terms of the ADSN, we're particularly interested in collaborations in health and social analytics and lifestyle interventions. And we also have a very strong focus on teaching education and data literacy.